After taking three years off, Microsoft is back to making entry-level Windows tablets with the Surface Go. Despite the new name and the new brand, it's really more of a follow-up to the Surface 3 than a complete rethinking of what a cheap Windows 10 tablet could look like. That doesn't mean that Microsoft hasn't made some significant changes, though. In terms of design, though, the Surface Go doesn't look all that different from the Surface 3. It's still a 10-inch device, the same magnesium chassis and sturdy build we've come to expect from these Surface products. There's a lot of close attention to detail, like the kickstand, which on these Surface tablets is just the best on any device. And overall, it's just a really attractive little computer. The display is really bright, maxing out at 420 nits, and it even has a wide color gamut and really great contrast. Again, that's all stuff we expect from Surface products, but for $400, you're getting a really well-crafted device. As for ports, on one side you have just a single USB-C port and the headphone jack and a Surface Dock connector, which is magnetic, just like the old MagSafe power connections on the old MacBooks that we all miss. And then along the top you have, of course, just a power button and a simple volume rocker. That single USB-C port is not a lot, I know, but with a tablet like this, it actually feels appropriate. Unlike a lot of larger Windows tablets, the Surface Go actually feels great to hold in one hand and carry around like you would an iPad. It's not quite as thin and light as Apple's tablets, but Microsoft really has trimmed some weight off since the Surface 3, and you can definitely feel it when you're using it in tablet mode. Before we go any further, let's talk a minute about tablet mode, because like I said, the Surface Go feels great in the hand as a tablet in terms of the device itself, but when you actually get into tablet mode in Windows 10, there's just not a lot to do. The app situation for tablet usage on Windows is as dire as ever, especially leaning on the selection in the Microsoft Store in S mode. Most of the simple stuff is there, whether it's Twitter or Netflix, which have nice interfaces designed for touch, but some tablet favorites like YouTube and Kindle are straight up missing, while others aren't optimized for touch at all, like Spotify, Facebook, Evernote, and so on. For those, you're left to carefully poke through web apps and desktop apps that were clearly designed for a keyboard and mouse. Even tablet mode in Windows 10 itself is lacking in functionality. There's no split screen mode, no intuitive way of switching between apps, and outside of the launcher, you're kind of stuck just tapping through the taskbar and hitting the start menu every time you want to do something different. The fact that they sell this thing without a keyboard is kind of ridiculous. The good news is as a laptop, strangely enough, the Surface Go really does feel a little more at home. Yes, it's got a small screen, and yes, the processor isn't a Intel Core processor, it's an Intel Pentium. However, I could totally see this working for the kind of person who doesn't need a lot of processing power in their daily life. The Alcantara type cover that came with our review unit is one of the highlights of the Surface Go, which makes it that much more unfortunate that it's not bundled in. It latches on magnetically in a really satisfying and secure way, has a fantastic keyboard that I really grew to love, and even a touchpad that's more smooth and accurate than some laptops that cost well over $1,000. All of that makes for a surprisingly good typing experience that makes the Surface Go feel a bit more like a real laptop. That's not to say, however, that performance is great or anything. Our $550 configuration came with 8GB of RAM, and the Pentium is a big step up from the Atom processor used on the Surface 3, but it's not an Intel Core processor, and you can feel that when you have a heavier workload going. If you're looking for something that you can plug into an external monitor and have 10 to 15 browser tabs open along with a few different applications all running at the same time, a decent Chromebook or basic budget Windows laptop will probably serve you better. But again, you have to keep the four or $500 price point in mind. As for battery life, we're seeing about eight hours in video playback and around four or five in general productivity and web browsing. It's not great, it's not as good as an iPad or even a premium laptop but it's what I consider to be passable for this type of device. Overall, we really like the Surface Go. It's a pretty solid improvement over the previous attempts at a small Surface tablet, and it just makes a stronger case for this type of device. But because of its less than great performance and mediocre tablet experience, it's a hard product to recommend to the average person. In most cases, you're probably better off springing for an iPad or just a standard budget Windows laptop, even though neither of those really attempts to do quite what the Surface Go does. However, if you are the kind of person who's always dreamed of a device that could do it all, that could go with you everywhere, and mold itself to different environments that you're in, the Surface Go is not perfect, but it might be the best attempt yet at fulfilling that dream. 
Hey, thanks for checking out this video. What do you think of the Surface Go? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos from Digital Trends, make sure to subscribe.